There's some moments in law enforcement that will completely stop you in your tracks. They really make you think and they make you put things in perspective. Hey guys, what's going on? I hope you are having a fantastic week so far. I do apologize, I have not kept my end of the bargain as far as live streams go, uh, but the computer that I have been using uh, throughout the entirety of this channel has finally gone kaput. So I don't have a easily accessible webcam uh, to be able to do that. I might have to turn my DSLR into a webcam, uh, but yeah, so <laughs> she gave me a lot of years, a lot of YouTube videos. Uh, I'm very thankful for that, but uh, yeah, she is done for. Uh, so I'm gonna have to find another laptop at some point to edit and do things like that. Right now I'm having to use the desktop. That's the reason why I have not been doing live streams like I said I was going to. So not long ago, one of my officers was being very proactive and making a bunch of traffic stops. It was late at night, maybe about one in the morning. One of those drivers that he decided to stop decided not to stop and the chase was on. My first thought as the supervisor and watch commander, shit, now we gotta do an after action report. Honestly, I was just pissy because I didn't get there on time. Stupid V6. So long story short, uh, K9 decides to do a track and I volunteered to stay back with the vehicle uh, as it eventually came to a stop and ended up hitting a pole and the people got out and bailed on foot. So I offered to stay with the vehicle until the tow truck got there and the officer could do the inventory and everything else. One of my other officers decides to stay there on scene with me. Keep in mind, this is a horrible part of town and it's like two o'clock in the morning by now. Well, the officer that decided to stay with me is a good bit older than me, maybe about 20 years. Uh, he's prior military. He worked in law enforcement at another agency before coming over here. And he's a great officer to have on shift. And just like the other guy at the beginning of the story, he's also very proactive. He works independently. I very rarely ever have to send his reports back for corrections. He's just a good officer and a good guy in general. So again, we're in a pretty terrible neighborhood and there's like shots fired on a regular basis. And we're standing out there, it's about two or three in the morning. And since we're just waiting there, we're kind of talking about different things, issues in the department, just things in general. And out of nowhere, this guy comes from the shadows and just materializes in front of us. He has a beard, several layers of clothing. You could tell he's dirty. He looks uh, what you would think of as a stereotypical like homeless guy. And as the man approaches, I can see that he has a cane and just straight off the bat, dude, he's like talking crazy already. So of course I'm watching his hands. He's got that cane. Like I'm not trying to get whacked in the noggin at two o'clock in the morning on this street. Well, the officer that I'm with says hello to him, greets him, and then he calls him by his first name. My first thought is, okay, he's dealt with him before on a call, so he's familiar with him. So right away, the guy looks at me and he starts asking me if I know who he is. And usually with people in this sort of a mental state, um, I will play along to an extent. I'm not gonna do anything that's gonna be dangerous to them or to me or anything like that. But a lot of times I kind of play into, it just depends on the circumstances. Like this is not something that you learn in the academy or something that you're even gonna pick up like within the first six months to a year of doing the job. But you'll understand as the years go on that there are certain times where it's okay to kind of play along with people's, um, you know, the things they're seeing. Uh, because sometimes it will actually calm them down that you can see it too, if that makes sense. But you have to be careful about those times uh, because if you do it at the wrong time, uh, it can make somebody completely explosive. Um, so you just kind of have to feel it out. It just comes with time and experience. It's not something I could tell you guys on video and necessarily teach you. You just have to know how to kind of read people. So anyway, I play into this guy and I act interested. Like I want to know who he is. The guy proceeds to tell me that he is the mayor of this neighborhood. And then he tells me, uh, you know, the general name of the area that we call it. So my reaction is I act shocked. Wow. It's really nice to meet you, Mayor. I want you to let us know if we can do anything for you. And usually at this point, most people are satisfied. You know, you kind of stroke their ego a little bit and they go on about their way. But right before the guy walks off, the officer that I'm with stops him and he says, now do you know who I am? He says, my name starts with a P. So the guy kind of squints. He's looking at the uniform, he's squinting. And I guess he sees the word police. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, oh, hell no. It says police, I'm out and he starts walking away. I couldn't help it, that made me laugh out loud. But my officer was like, nah man, my name's blank. And he tells him. And you see this guy kind of light up, like he becomes uh, more animated and he's like, oh, you arrested my sister. So the conversation goes back and forth and you can tell that the guy is kind of pretending that he knows the officer and he doesn't really, 
he can't quite place them. So the conversation ends when this guy mumbles something about needing to get back to his people and he has people he needs to serve and stuff like that. And he starts walking away. So the guy turns back at us and he's like, all right then. And we're both like, all right then. So I'm standing there as I'm watching, we are both watching this guy walking down the road and he's limping. As he's walking away, he's waving to everybody that's in their yards, you know, saying hello to everybody and greeting everybody. But keep in mind, this is two o'clock in the morning. There is nobody outside. You could hear a pin drop in this neighborhood, especially after a high-speed chase. People are gonna be inside, like they're not trying to be outside and involved and all that stuff. So this guy was literally waving to abandoned houses. And in his mind, there was people there. And he was the mayor of this town. He was proud of it. And he was waving to the shadows. He looked like he felt like he was on the red carpet, like an actor or an actress, you know, waving to their fans and he slowly disappears into a shadow down the street. And the next moment had a very profound effect on me that I didn't really recognize or even necessarily think about uh, the deep impact it would have. So as this guy keeps walking away and eventually just becomes this silhouette and disappears, my officer that was with me, while we're both still looking down the street says, you know who that was? And of course me, I'm like, no, I've never seen the dude before. Still looking down the road, he says, that's Steve, man. We grew up together. Can you believe, Sarge, that that man used to be the most popular guy in high school? He had a nice car. All the girls wanted him. And now look at him. All because of drugs. And for whatever reason, that moment hit me, but it took me a little time to process uh, just the effect it would have on me. You have, you have experiences in law enforcement that are going to affect you. Most of them, uh, I, I think are usually trauma related, uh, which is understandable and or, uh, predictable that something like that would affect you. But, uh, every once in a while, something will just catch you off guard. And this one totally caught me off guard. I didn't know that my officer went to school with him. I didn't know anything about this guy. I didn't know about their history. But to know this guy that's waving uh, at nothing used to be the most popular guy in high school and like all the girls wanted him, like all the statements that my officer was making really sunk in at that point. It now became personal because my officer knew this guy. And I think part of the impact for me was seeing these two guys that came from the same upbringing, the same neighborhood with vastly different outcomes. To see this guy that looked homeless, he was delusional, obviously burned out mentally from decades and decades of drug use. And then to see my officer, who is always a 10, he's sharp, his shoes are shiny, his wheels are shiny, he's always squared away. Right there, it just instantly made me realize how sad this was. You see this so much as a cop. You see homeless people all the time but it never really sinks in until it becomes personal who they were to somebody else. It's very easy to become this very two dimensional being as a cop. And, and a lot of times that's, that's okay. You have a job to do a lot of times that's positive. It's beneficial to be like that because otherwise, if you take everything personally into heart and everything else, you're gonna have a hard career uh, if you even have a career. A lot of people will quit because they take everything personally uh, and that's fine. Like I said, I've told you guys before in other videos, I'd much rather you hang it up if you can't do it than to try to force yourself to do it and be shitty at it. But even after 14 years, last month was 14 years of service I've put in, even after 14 years, I still get impacted by very random things. And this was one of those occasions. And honestly, it, it made me grateful for the choices I made. I made a lot of dumb decisions when I was younger. There's a lot of things I wish I could take back. Uh, but I'm also glad that I didn't go down certain rabbit holes that would have led me to a very dark place. And who knows, that might've been me. So if you are on the right path, stay on the right path, guys. Don't go down that rabbit hole of drugs and partying and everything else, because it's just, it's not going to pay off. It's not. A lot of people are going to end up like this dude walking down the street. I'm sure this was never his plan. He never planned for this. This was not part of his future. He probably had hopes and dreams just like everybody else. His parents probably had hopes and dreams for him. Uh, so it's sad to see somebody end up in that state of mind. It really is. Either way, I just wanted to share this story with you guys because, like I said, it really had a profound effect on me. Uh, and I know you guys like story time, so I wanted to share it with you guys. Uh, plus, it's been a while since I've done a video. I do understand that. 
So either way, thank you guys so much for watching today. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your weekend. Like I said, I'm gonna be trying to get a new laptop here sometime in the next month or two. Uh, and I'm gonna try to be doing more live streams and stuff since mine is 10-7, as we said. Have a fantastic rest of your week and I will see you guys very, very soon.